time for our monthly catch-up with the lovely Vanessa, who is an expert on all things plant-based diets. In fact, she's a plant-based health coach and expert speaker about these things as well. Her name is Vanessa Sturman, and you can look her up on Facebook in How to Go Plant-Based or on Instagram, Energize and Thrive Plant-Based. She is a font of knowledge and she's so enthusiastic because she knows how good it is for us. She hasn't converted me fully just yet, but I have been listening. So every month we like to get her on and just pick her brain for some top tips. Um, And tonight we're going to talk about how is the best way to start going plant-based and potentially also get some recipe ideas, some brief, quick recipe ideas as well. So I spoke to her just before the show and I said a very warm welcome. How are you? I am very good, thank you. How are you? Excellent, thanks. I don't know if anybody's ever as good as you. Is it because of your diet, do you reckon? A big, big part. Mm. Of course, you know, we've got to have good people around us. We've got to make sure that we're doing the things that we really love. But honestly, I just can't say it enough. When we are putting great food in our body that's making our gut health excellent, that's keeping us nice and satisfied full and tastes amazing and is fun it's varied it's across lots of cuisines and obviously includes plant-based cake then you know (laughs) you're gonna have amazing energy well of course and I know that that you you are a real ambassador for this and an expert on it which is why we like to pick your brains because people are becoming far more curious about this way of healthy eating because you know we're, we're we're a nation that is a lot of people are getting sick and tired of being sick and tired, which is a lot to do with what we put in in us. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's affecting our energy levels. Also, when we're eating certain foods, it is going to take us further towards danger zones of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, which we know we're ripping through the country. And actually, when we eat more whole foods, more plants, less processed foods, we start to get out of those danger zones. But it's not just getting out of danger zones. It's I want to feel good for the rest of my life. I want a good, not just lifespan, but health span. I want to enjoy things. I don't want my joints to ache. I want to have great energy. And I want to be full, satisfied and get on with my life and enjoy all the lovely food. And that's what's amazing about healthy food. This is not about sitting and eating salad. This is about having, I mean, I went for an amazing plant-based Indian the other night, which was wonderful. Um, I've just made myself a Nigerian peanut stew with yam and tofu and chickpeas and it's just absolutely delicious i'm going to have some of that later you know you can have food from all around the world that is whole foods tasty and is really going to elevate your health right and is that i mean i know what we're going to talk about today is, is how we discipline ourselves to do it to stick to it the willpower required but i guess everything that you've just said sounds like the willpower shouldn't even be a part of it because the food food tastes great and then we feel great Yeah, and I think what's really important about this is I am so anti the diet industry. If something is feeling like a diet, like a fad, then it probably is. This is about overall healthy eating, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to look different for everyone. So you might be fully plant-based. Someone else might say, actually, I know I need to be healthier. Can I please get more of these plants into my diet? But I still want to have some meat, some eggs, some dairy. And that's fine when it's a reduced amount, of course. So it doesn't have to look the same for everyone. And it's not about restricting yourself. So it's got to be good and easy enough for you. Willpower, I think, is when you're constantly resisting foods. Now, if you're constantly resisting foods, then you're probably not giving your body what it really, really needs. If you are filling your body up with brilliant proteins, you know, and on the plant side, this is, you know, your tofu, your beans, mushrooms, nuts, all of those things, lots of great complex carbs, loads of fruit and veg, you know, then you're not going to be craving maybe the sugary, really processed foods you might have been craving. That's really, really important. So we shouldn't be having to apply willpower like that. And if anyone's done dieting before, they'll probably know, yeah, you spend the whole day resisting foods. The more you eat healthily, the less you want some of those less healthy foods, but you can still have less healthy foods in your diet. It's just about having a bit of moderation on them. So we want to get rid of willpower and eat this wonderful, like I said, you know, you're eating curries and stews and you can eat all sorts of, you can even have beautiful fluffy buckwheat pancakes covered in peanut butter and berries for breakfast. You know, that's all part of this healthy eating. 
So you want that other stuff less because you are satisfying your gut, you're getting the nutrients you need. And then the discipline side is, okay, if we are going to get these healthier foods into our life, I do need to make sure I've stocked up on fruit, veg, beans. I do need to make sure that I've chopped up a few carrot sticks to have with that hummus, or I've done a bulk cook of that really healthy, beautiful lentil spicy curry. It's that that's the discipline because a service station is not going to make it super easy for you to eat healthily. So we need to have some discipline to say, well, I've got to make sure I've got these foods around and put a bit of time into food prep. And that's what's going to make the difference. Right. Well said. So the discipline part, which actually isn't a discipline for me. I love planning a new healthy regime and then going shopping for it. I mean, that that is a treat for me. But if you do put that in place, you're setting yourself up for success. Yes, that is completely, completely true because it's the consistency and it doesn't have to be perfect every day. You know, it might just be making sure you've got various pieces of fruit and veg into your day. You may have had a meal that wasn't as healthy, but that doesn't mean all is lost. Don't have any guilt. Just keep going with getting more healthy foods in. And I actually think that the more people, I think people start to see benefits very quickly. You know, I've had clients that literally after a few weeks of getting, you know, they're people who are not even going fully plant-based, just getting more beans, more veg, even in a completely tasty way into their way of eating. They've gone, wow, I've got so much more energy. And so they want to put the discipline in because they go, well, the impact of me not putting the discipline in is that I'm going to not feel so good about myself. I'm going to have lots of bloating. I'm going to feel sluggish. So when you start also not only just enjoy getting all the lovely foods, and I love doing that as well, but actually you feel the benefits to your body, it starts becoming a non-negotiable and becomes as much of a habit as brushing your teeth. And we don't avoid brushing our teeth because we, we know the consequence is uh, just some horrible trips to the dentist. Absolutely. Do you know what? That is a really good analogy, actually. We wouldn't miss brushing our teeth unless we've got, I mean, it's a, it's a classic, you know, if you're feeling really low, you don't start, you start not looking after yourself. But in order to mm. counteract that low feeling uh, and on a normal day, you're going to do the minimum, aren't you? You're going to put shoes on before you walk outside. You're going to brush your teeth. Why would we not look after the insides of our body so well as the outsides? Like you put a coat on before going outside? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's totally true. And if you build up slowly, and I really encourage people to build up slowly and in ways that really fit in with their life. So it could be, right, I'm having this usual breakfast. Maybe at the moment, it's just it's just oats. Yeah, oats are great, but we need to add some more protein to that. So we add some chia seeds. And actually, we could get minimum two pieces of fruit on that. All right, I'm going to make sure I've got frozen berries from the supermarket. And actually, if you get frozen berries, they're cheaper than the fresh ones and last for longer. I'm going to get blueberries on. I'm going to chop a banana on and put a few nuts on. You've just massively elevated your breakfast. You're going to feel more full, more energized. You're going to have less cravings. That was very small amounts of things that you had to do to get there. So it's about these small changes adding in, and then it becomes a natural habit that that's what your breakfast is like. Yes, habits. Of course, if you can create a habit out of something that you've got to do, then you do it without thinking and you certainly do it without it being a drag. And I mean, there are enough books out there to tell us this. We can actually apply that to our diet, to the choices we make about what we put in our mouths and inside our bodies. Uh, Vanessa knows a thing or two about it. Vanessa is to be found on Facebook on the How to Go Plant Based group and on Instagram, it's Energize and Thrive Plant Based. So we'll continue our chat with the plant based health coach and expert speaker that is Vanessa Sturman uh, very shortly. Do stick around, please, and get a pen and paper ready because she's got some really good little bits and bobs of recipes for us. So we'll, I want to write them all down and try them all at home. I know. Right. Chat with the brilliant Vanessa Sturman now. Um, she is a plant-based health coach and an expert speaker on all things plant-based. You can find her on Facebook at How To Go Plant-Based and also on Instagram at Energize and Thrive Plant-Based. There's loads of inspiring stuff on her Instagram. But if you are thinking about it, you know, do listen to what she says because she's got some really good tips. And of course, the biggest one is the best way, if you want to be successful at it, what is the best way to start? If you build up slowly, and I really encourage people to build up slowly and in ways that really fit in with their lives. So it could be, right, I'm having this usual breakfast. Maybe at the moment, it's just, it's just oats. Yeah, oats are great. But 
we need to add some more protein to that. So we had some chia seeds and actually we could get minimum two pieces of fruit on that. All right, I'm going to make sure I've got frozen berries from the supermarket. And actually, if you get frozen berries, they're cheaper than the fresh ones and last for longer. I'm going to get blueberries on. I'm going to chop a banana on and put a few nuts on. You've just massively elevated your breakfast. You're going to feel more full, more energized. You're going to have less cravings. That was very small amounts of things that you had to do to get there. So it's about these small changes adding in, and then it becomes a natural habit that that's what your breakfast is like. So we don't have to go all in at first, but the more we make these little changes and feel the benefits, we want to do it more. And we get excited about the foods. We get excited about all those wonderful flavors. I've been making lovely Thai green curries as well, or even making some of my own breads to go with curries. And the way you can also cook vegetables, people might say, oh, getting these veggies in is a bit difficult. Well, you know, we don't always have to steam them or have a lettuce, tomato and cucumber salad. Start (laughs) roasting some lovely aubergine with some soy sauce and put that on top of your salad. Uh, You know, put some herbs and harissa spice on some courgette and give them a roast. You know, we can do all sorts of different things. And the more flavors we have, natural flavors, that is, and herbs and spices, the better it is for our gut as well. And we get all the advantages of that, of good focus, good skin, less bloating. So there are so many advantages all around taste buds and health when we put in that bit of discipline to stay stocked up and say, I'm going to do a bit of cooking that I can eat for a few days. Right. Okay. Planning is the secret. Um, And I guess I think it's important actually as as well to point out that plant-based doesn't mean raw. I mean, obviously you've just explained some of the things you can cook, Mm. but a lot of people might get confused Yeah, I think this is really, really important because what can happen when anyone tries to go healthier, they can sometimes go what I call, I put this in big inverted commas, too healthy. And that means they sit and eat a raw salad every day. That is not going to give you what you need. It is going to mean you don't have the nutrients you need. You don't have enough calories. And yes, we need to get bits of raw food into our diet 100%. But we really, really need to cook food and we need a variety of food in our diet. So like I said, you know, cooking all these wonderful um, curries, stews, roasting our vegetables, beautiful, you know, bean burgers and guacamole, you know, this is a mix of cooked and raw food. And actually we need to make sure we're getting that nourishment in. And we've got different needs at different times, you know, especially for example, if you are um, a woman in the second half of her cycle, for example, you are going to have a higher calorie requirement and need to get more cooked food in. That's just one example. So we really need a mix of all of it. It should feel nourishing and hearty. And we don't just want to sit there eating a bowl of salad. Yeah, I mean, hearty, I think, is the key, isn't it? I would say normally by spring, we are, enjoy- you know, supposedly enjoying more lighter meals, but it's not spring yet properly, is it? I mean, Christ, it feels like winter. It does a little bit, doesn't it? And we can still enjoy those lighter meals. But my advice is, you know, really go with what your body's feeling because there might be points where you want a slightly lighter meal. But there might be points where you go, I really need a big mushroom and bean stew. I really, really need, um, you know, those lovely bean burgers and and sweet potato wedges and, you know, homemade ketchup or non-homemade ketchup either you know really do listen to your body because you might be doing more sport at this time you know our needs will change and you know that's the other thing is is don't let someone else completely dictate everything you're going to eat because we are all different bodies we've all got different energy requirements and it's really important that you're doing the right thing for you yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I looked at your pictures of your plant-based curry and it was a mouth watering. Did it look taste as good as it looked? It did. It tasted fantastic. And that was at a, a restaurant. And it is it is important to point out that when you go to a restaurant, however tasty it is, just a reminder that, you know, they're not going to cook in as healthy a way as you might at home. They might be adding quite a lot of oils and sugars. And it's totally fine every now and then. I love going out to eat. And that must be a part of your routine if you love eating out. It's just being aware that, you know, if you are getting lots of takeaways, you are going out to restaurants a lot. 
it may not be quite as healthy as what you're going to have at home, but 100% it's something you should go out and enjoy if you love doing that. I hear you. It's actually harder, I think, outside of London to find places that cater like that, like that. Uh, but it's definitely, definitely expanding. It is hugely expanding. And even outside London, if you don't have you know, a restaurant that's catered quite as well as that, uh, restaurants that cater really, really well to plant-based food um, is certainly in any with, with an Asian influence, uh, whether that's Indonesian or Thai or Vietnamese, you know, those countries, because they cook with so many spices yeah, and yeah. vegetables, you know, they and they use a lot of tofu. Um, mm. You know, you often get some really fantastic just dishes that they always made that were plant-based. Um, so I advise if you're struggling and you don't have any, uh, it doesn't matter if you don't have any fully plant-based restaurants, you know, head to, head to a Vietnamese restaurant and you'll probably get some absolutely fantastic, wonderful, flavorful food there if you want to try out a bit more plant-based food. I absolutely agree. Well, we've talked so much already, Vanessa. I know <laughs> that you've, you've got some um, really excellent sort of uh, money saving tips as well because I mean buying any food is expensive at the moment but when you're changing up and when you're making alterations you don't necessarily know the easy route to keep the spend down so can we talk about that next time maybe you've got some meal plan prep ideas and some you know go-to products that really work value for money for you Yes, I would mm. love to do that. That is one of my favourite topics as well. It's got <laughs> to be sustainable for the rest of your life and it shouldn't feel like a massive burden. So excited mm. so much to talk about that. Oh, yes. Yes. So we'll have Vanessa back on next month. We will look forward to that. Any tips about saving dollar? Very welcome here. It's BBC Hereford and Worcester. Thank you for joining us tonight. 